Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror fantasy film, Recycle. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a famous romance writer, Ting, smoking in a dressing room after a press conference. She's a pretty woman wearing glasses. Her manager had blindsided her on stage and announced that she will be soon releasing her new book, Recycle. But the thing is, Ting is far from finishing the book, and she is furious that he is pressuring her with the announcement. She's always been a meticulous writer, and right now, she is struggling to develop the main female character in her new novel. Her manager assures her that she still has time, and announcing the book early is just a way to drum up anticipation. Ting wrote under a pseudonym, and rose to prominence after her trilogy, My Love, became a smash hit. The story is a tragic romance between two lovers who met at the wrong time. Hot off the tail of the book's success, a film company quickly acquired the movie rights and began shooting. Ting was invited to the movie's press conference along with her manager. One of the reporters there asked her if the love story in her novels was based on her real-life experience. She nervously admitted that some parts of the story were borrowed from her own experience, since she always subconsciously puts herself inside her characters. The reporter then asked her if the male character was based on someone she loved. She just vaguely replied that the person the male character was based on is dead. This was when her manager diverted the crowd's attention by announcing that Ting had already started writing her next book, and it will be about the supernatural. While she was speaking, a long-haired man in a suit tried to enter the room, but the guard denied his entry. After the event, the man approached her and said congratulations. His name is Ran, and they were lovers long ago. He also inspired the male character of her story. Ran invited her out for drinks, but Ting refused. Later that night, she continues to work on her new novel and describes her main character as a long-haired and resilient girl. Later on, she arrives home, no longer wearing glasses after getting her groceries. She has the feeling that someone else was in the house. She also finds strands of long, dark hair in the sink and even sees a glimpse of a figure as well. She then gets a call from her friend, whose brother is Ran. Ting agrees to meet with her, but explicitly asks that she not mention her brother. After she hangs up, the phone rings again. This time, there's nothing but static on the other end of the line. It turns out that her friend asked to meet with her due to ulterior motives. Her brother is now divorced and wants to give his relationship with Ting a try, but Ting shuts it down and refuses to let him in her life again. She also mentions to her friend that ever since she started working on her new novel, strange things have been happening to her. Her friend says that there are people who find themselves experiencing the paranormal after researching or writing about it, and this may be what is happening to Ting. Ting gets home that night and washes her face in the bathroom. She then hears footsteps in her apartment, so she goes to investigate. But Ting does not find anyone there, so she just goes back to the bathroom. She suddenly sees a woman with long, dark hair, covering her face in the bathroom mirror reflection. Moments later, she also sees strands of dark hair on the floor. Ting is startled and runs out of the bathroom to pick up the phone. However, she only hears coughs and groans from the other end. However, this strangely inspires her to write more. She sits down in front of her computer and types about her experience in the bathroom. The phone rings again, and she presses her ear near her answering machine. This time, she can clearly hear a baby wailing. Back at her desk, her crumpled drafts begin quivering inside her wastebasket. She grabs the piece of paper and reads her previous work. Ting realizes that the paranormal stuff she wrote in her initial draft is happening to her in real life, including the weird calls and the protagonist's long dark hair. Right then, someone knocks on the door. She opens it and sees Ran. He says that he called her telephone, but the line was busy. So he went up to her apartment to check on her. He is still insistent that they talk but Ting does not let him inside. Instead, they go out to dinner. He explains that he's now divorced, and he should have left his wife eight years ago when he fell in love with Ting. But he didn't choose Ting before and broke her heart, which however, inspired her to write her best-selling book. He reveals that he couldn't leave his wife back then because his wife got pregnant. Then his father-in-law died and he had to take over the business. He pleaded for Ting to wait for him to get divorced. But after a while, she got tired of his excuses and stopped replying to his letters. She is now glad she didn't sit around and wait for a shitty man who couldn't choose her. Ting leaves Ran alone at the restaurant. She walks along a deserted street and suddenly the wind picks up and a strange light appears in the distance. When she gets home, she writes about the strange occurrence. Ting briefly passes out and watches as the words on her monitor mention that her protagonist went to a hallway. Out of curiosity, Ting runs out of her apartment and enters the elevator. It halts on the seventh floor and even when she attempts to close the doors, it keeps opening on the same floor a creepy old lady and a young child step inside, and the elevator finally closes. When the elevator reaches the ground floor, Ting walks out and the child follows her. 
The old lady says that they're not supposed to stop there, and they have one more floor to go. The child goes back to the elevator, and when Ting looks back, she watches as the two descend downstairs, without the elevator moving. Ting presses forward, and sees an exit. She steps outside, and is awed by the city she sees. It is the opposite of the modern and flourishing city she lives in. Instead, it is empty, dilapidated, and the buildings are all run down. After walking for a short while, bodies start dropping from the sky. In front of her are people strewn all over the road. They start quivering, and then rising up and moving in robot-like motions. Their faces are gaunt and gray, with blank expressions. Across the street is a faceless woman with long, dark hair, staring at Ting. She points one bony finger at her, and Ting feels chills down her spine. She takes it as a sign that she should go, and she takes off running, while the bodies are going after her. She manages to lose them, and ends up at the end of the street. But the edge is like a cliff, and beyond that is just a vast and inhospitable expanse. She can't move forward, and behind her is the faceless woman. So she ducks to the side, and hides in one of the buildings. She locks the door behind her, with more of the bodies slamming at the door. Ting goes down a narrow set of stairs, and heads toward a dark alley line with windows. Ting exits this building and enters an open space, with a working ferris wheel in the middle. Suddenly, she sees an old man sitting on the bench. He asks her how she got there, and Ting asks him where she is. The old man calmly flips through a notebook, and asks her again how she got there. So she tells him about going down the elevator, and seeing an old lady with a young child. The old man cryptically says that she does not belong in this world. Ting is puzzled, since he looks like a regular human. But he quickly mentions that he is not like her. He then pulls out one of the crumpled draft pages from his pocket. Upon seeing it, Ting remembers that all this started when she first began writing her next novel. The old man explains that she is one of the creators of this world. It is where all discarded creations go, and everything there can vanish in a blink of an eye. It turns out when Ting wrote the story Recycle, the world was formed. And since the story had supernatural elements, the world also contains some scary creatures, like the faceless woman with long dark hair. Suddenly, everything, including the wind and the ferris wheel, comes to a stop. The old man is alarmed, and tells her that she has to leave, because once everything in that dimension disappears, she will be gone as well. Ting is later transported to another world. This time it's a cold forest, with towering trees and bodies hanging from their branches. The bodies are emaciated too, but they have elongated necks. They start moving towards Ting, but a huge mechanical horse appears out of nowhere, with a girl wearing a mask riding it. The girl tells Ting to come with her, and the author obliges. They go to a massive yard, filled with enormous toys. Ting asks the girl who she is, and she quietly removes her mask. She replies that she does not have a name, and that she is just one of the abandoned creations in the world. Everything that was discarded by the creators, including their thoughts and promises, ended up in that world. The nameless girl points at the pile of old discarded toys behind them, and says that all the toys Ting threw away ended up there. Suddenly, the toys around them start disappearing. The nameless girl exclaims that the phenomenon is called Recycle, and if they disappear with the objects, they will be recycled, and trapped in the dimension. The two fight against the wind, and hide inside a cave. The cave is filled with shelves of books, and the nameless girl tugs Ting along, and tells her that she knows someone who can help her leave. It turns out to be the same old man who she had encountered earlier. He is hunched over a desk looking at manuscripts, and he remarks that Ting needs to leave immediately. She answers that she has been trying to leave the dimension, but she doesn't know the way. Finally, the old man relents and retrieves a book from another shelf. For Ting to be able to go back to her world, she needs to go to the transit, but she can't make it there on her own. Fortunately, the nameless girl volunteers to help her get there, and the old man will show them the way. Based on the book, Ting has to pick wildflowers, then take the path covered with hell money. She will pass the crescent moon, red earth, and rootless grasses. After that, she will arrive at the transit. However, the rest of the instructions are too blurred for them to understand. So Ting would just have to make do. Before they leave, the old man gives her some hell money. Ting and the nameless girl start their journey. Their first obstacle is a bridge filled with the walking dead. Ting has to hold her breath and blend in, or else the dead bodies will know that she is not one of them. So the two carefully walk across the bridge. Ting makes her expression go blank, and her movements robotic to blend in. Still, some of the bodies curiously look at her. They are near the other side, but they have to step over some broken stones first. Ting gingerly steps over them, but the ground gives way, and they struggle to hold on to the bridge. The sound attracts the bodies, and the two quickly heave themselves over to the other side. Ting jumps in first into a hole. She lands inside a tunnel with red stone on the walls. Inside the tunnel are tiny baby fetuses, still connected to umbilical cords. As she walks deeper into the tunnel, the babies get bigger until they wake up and shriek at her. 
The nameless girl appears and points her toward the exit, and Ting tries with all her might to ignore the fetuses and concentrate on getting to the nameless girl. The nameless girl grabs her hand and tugs her outside the red earth tunnel. They emerge in a lush green forest. She asks the nameless girl what the babies were, and she answers that they were aborted fetuses who will keep on growing until they are fully developed. But they will be dumped in a certain dimension. Ting and the nameless girl continue walking through a field of wildflowers, but Ting suddenly feels weak, and her hands begin to fade. The nameless girl also looks paler, and she explains that the closer to transit they are, the weaker she becomes. They pick the wildflowers and fall asleep on the rootless grass. When they wake up, Ting tells the nameless girl that she looks familiar. The nameless girl says that is impossible, because she does not have a name. Ting then names her Ting Yu, signifying that the girl is now a part of her family. Night falls, and they see a crescent moon, hanging over a graveyard of forgotten people. Their bodies are seated on top of the gravestones, and they are blocking the two's way. Ting gets the idea to give them the wildflowers they picked, as a way to remember the forgotten people. The bodies gladly accept the flowers, and allow the two girls to pass. However, they soon run out of flowers, and the bodies demand more. So the two make a run for it, but the bodies catch them. Another idea forms in her head. She pulls out the hell money given by the old man, and throws it up in the air to distract the bodies, while they cross to the other side of the graveyard. In that way, they finally reach the transit, but the little girl is now fading away. Ting desperately suggests that the girl come with her to the real world, but the girl says it is no use, since she will be just a wandering spirit there. Ting has grown to love the nameless girl, who had been her friend and ally in the strange recycle world, and it breaks her heart to leave the girl behind, in such a cold and barren place. But it is time for Ting to go back to her own world. She leaves the little girl slumped on the grass. The world is going to be recycled soon, and the bodies are quickly swarming her. She needs to go now, or she will be gone forever. The faceless woman confronts Ting, telling her that since she dumped them there, it is only fitting that Ting stay there with them. A flash of light erupts, and she discovers that everyone else has been frozen. The girl weakly whispers that they have reached the ending that her mommy had written. Ting is confused at first. But she soon realizes that the little girl is the spirit of her daughter that she had with Ran. It is revealed that when she had dinner with her ex-lover, the last thing she said to him was that, eight years ago when he chose his wife, Ting was pregnant too, but she didn't tell him. When he kept her waiting, and Ting got tired, she decided to terminate her pregnancy, so she would no longer have any ties to Ran. Because the aborted fetus was discarded by Ting, she ended up at the tunnel shown earlier, and eventually grew into the nameless girl that Ting befriended. But the girl tells her that all is forgiven, and now she is glad that she met her mommy in this dimension. Right then, the old man appears, and Ting also realizes that he is her grandpa, and he has been taking care of her daughter in this dimension for long. A brighter flash of light erupts once more, and Ting wakes up in a cold sweat back in her apartment. Invigorated by her supernatural experience in the recycle world, she pens the story of her meeting her daughter. Satisfied with her work, she goes to her study, only to be astounded by the sight of another version of herself wearing glasses, talking to her manager on the phone. This other version says on the phone that she has also finished her draft. But she changed her story to be about reincarnation instead, since she feels like she put too much of herself into her initial character. As the old man explained earlier, there are other creators who also wrote the world, and these creators are the written versions of Ting who found themselves in the stories that the original author wrote. The movie ends with the two Tings coming face to face, and then the phone rings with the baby's wail. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.